nice fiery red spool of 24 wires to break off into two channels of 12 wires each for our fireball rodent coil. It's gonna be great. What's going on everybody? I'm the Benefactor and this is the second part to our rodent coil workshop where I will be showing you how to properly wind your coil after you've successfully twisted the multi-filer. So what we did is we took 24 gauge wire, magnetic enameled, and we twisted 24 of those wires together use, uh, uh, producing a multi-filer. And it turned out beautiful. And it fits through the tor, so we can put our spool through the tor and not have to damage um, or twist or um, um, tangle the wires, which was a big problem for winding my uh, Mark I. So what we will be doing right now is the long but meditative process <clears throat> of winding this coil. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our spool and we're going to get the end and we're going to leave maybe three, four inches, uh, maybe four, eh, four to six inches off the end 
as our leads. And anywhere you want, or any any slide, any uh, disk you want, we're gonna start at the middle. So see the one that aligns, see how that aligns with this middle disk here? We're gonna start there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist the start around here to give it some support. And then we're gonna go one over and then one up. So that's the next one right here we're gonna put it in. And I'll show you in a second. Let me disable this stupid blurry background because it's actually not working um, like I wanted it to. We're gonna start in the middle. See right there? And then we're gonna go over and up one every time we put it through one of these rings. So over to the next one, but up one. Over to the next one, but up one. And we're gonna do that and follow that same pattern as we wind it. And we're starting, we're gonna start the wind with a counterclockwise wind. And then once we're done with the counterclockwise wind, we're going to bend it and I'll show you the bend. It's very simple. We'll bend it on top of the middle wire and then we're gonna start it in the opposite direction, clockwise. So if you flip it over, it'll be um, clockwise. And that will be the interference pattern. Uh, it does take a couple hours, you know, two to three hours or more, depending on how experienced you are and how fast you are with winding these. So be prepared to uh, sit down and get comfortable uh, because it is going to take a while, especially if you're new with this. Um, and I do recommend taking your time because you don't want to scratch the enamel. So wear gloves, take your time with it. Don't try to rush it. Um, just uh, be careful with the wire. Don't scratch it. Don't tangle it. Don't get it caught on these sharp edges. Um, Nathan and I discussed a method that um, he's going to be utilizing in the future to round off some of these edges so they don't get caught. Because um, uh, what I've experienced with my first try at this is um, when winding it, the multi-filer got caught a lot a lot on these little edges and it almost like separated the multi-filer and you don't want them to separate you want them to stay as a tightly tacked uh tightly packed bundle of wire so we're going to start that and enjoy the meditative experience that is winding these rodent coils and oh real quick what you will need during this process is simply something to cut the wire with i recommend um, something like a wire stripper that has a cutter at the end so you can get a clean cut and you also are going to need about two packs of these I recommend more than a pack just in case you need more um, but I took it to us for the original coil it took about one and a half packs of these zip ties
After you come up to meet the starting point when you finished your counterclockwise wind, simply bend the wire approximately 125 degrees back downward to produce the clockwise wind. This will be done in the opening directly below the start point. In this next step, what we will be doing is twisting the 12 wires together in series for channel A and then again for channel B. To do this, simply put your multimeter on continuity mode and clip any of the input or start wires with your red multimeter alligator clip. Next, find that same wire's end using your black alligator on the multimeter to search the other side. Once you find both ends of the wire, disconnect your black alligator clip and leave your red one attached to the start wire. Grab the wire you just disconnected from the multimeter and attach it to any other wire from the start bundle or the side with the red clip still attached. What we are doing is finding another wire that isn't being used and placing it in series. We will repeat this step 11 times, leaving two wires open for each channel. When finished, you should have two pairs of four connections. This will be your start and end for channel A and start and end for channel B. Make sure it's all low. As you complete your brand new zero point energy generator system, take a moment to savor this incredible achievement. Keep in mind that it will produce ozone at approximately seven volts and above. So it is best to experiment in short increments or ideally outside. Now, give yourself a well-deserved round of applause. This is no small feat. As you reflect on what you've accomplished, 
Recognize that you've joined a select few who have publicly achieved this milestone. You've built a device to harness the power of free energy and taken a monumental step toward a brighter future. This moment is more than just a technical triumph. It is a beacon of hope in a symbol of human potential. With these new skills, you're not just building a device, you're helping to ignite the next industrial revolution. Your journey doesn't end here. It's time to share this transformative knowledge with others. My mission for you is to teach, inspire, and empower those around you with this sacred and deeply spiritual forbidden wisdom. This is a gift that belongs to everybody, and together we can bring light to a world that has long awaited it. This has been a special Beneficence TV workshop event, and I'm the Benefactor, your guide here on Beneficence TV, an effort to disseminate all forms of forbidden knowledge, and I'm honored to have guided you through this journey. If you feel inspired to support further research and development, consider joining my Patreon, linked in the description below. Your support fuels this mission, and I am profoundly grateful for it. I could not have done this without the help of some amazing friends. So stay tuned for more exciting developments in Zero Point Energy, right here on Beneficence TV.